right, so this is our second regression recording or second regression question. And um, so suppose that you wanted to determine if the number of ounces that a coffee person drinks in a day has an impact on the amount that they sleep in a typical night. All right, so does coffee impact the amount that somebody sleeps? Coffee would be your explanatory, right? Okay, because it's the thing doing the impacting. Right, so there's your explanatory or the amount, number of ounces, excuse me. It's an explanatory. And my response is the amount that they sleep in a particular night. So the number of hours they sleep in a particular night. And we look and we got, okay, here's the evidence, all right? Well, I look at this and this one actually happens to have a, what's called a fitted line. It's your regression line. So it's gonna to correspond to your regression line, the one that you actually get inside if you like crunch the numbers. If we look, we can see uh, there does at least appear to be a line and it appears that the data kind of matches that, right? So it actually says, if I look at this, the more coffee I drink, the less I sleep. Seems to make sense. I'm somewhere down here. Okay, guys, I need to cool it on the coffee, but I do math. What are you going to do? Coffee is what we do, all right? So yeah, as I increase the amount of coffee that I drink, what I'm going to get is I'm going to decrease the amount of sleep that I get. And that tells me that I'm going to have like a negative correlation. At least it looks like it's going to be negative, right? Certainly my my dot my scatter plot looks negative. Okay. Now we asked ourselves which is the explanatory variable and which is the response variable. And I went back up here and I'm like, oh, it's coffee is the explanatory. I drink a amount of coffee, it affects my sleep. Boom. That's my hypothesis at least. According to StatCrunch, now we get an R of 0.75 or negative 0.758. So that's a negative right there. Explain what this means in terms of the relationship between the amount of coffee and the number of hours of sleep an individual gets. So what this means is first, I want to notice that it's negative. Okay. So first R is negative. And since R is negative, what that tells me is that as I increase the amount of coffee that I drink, sleep is going to go down. Okay. And as I decrease the amount of coffee that I drink, sleep is going to go up, right? Those two are related differently, okay? They're um, in a positive relationship as the amount of coffee I drink would go up, we'd sleep more, which would be great because then it would mean I could sleep all the coffee, drink all the coffee I wanted. But that's not what happens, right? Drink more coffee, sleep goes down. That's a negative relationship. That's the first part. The second part is to notice that 0.758 is between 0.5 and 0.8. And since it's between 0.5 and 0.8, that tells me that the relationship is moderately strong. So there's a pretty good statistical relationship here, or moderately strong relationship between um, the amount of coffee that I drink and the amount that I sleep. So it's a moderately strong negative relationship. So I'm like, okay, I got a pretty good relationship there. It gives me some information. Now, according to the findings, would you contend that there's a relationship between the amount of coffee that someone drinks and the amount that they uh, that they sleep? Well, my answer is yes. I do definitely believe that there is. And the reason why is because I got a moderately strong negative relationship. So as I drink more coffee, I'm going to sleep less. That's the information and the data is because R is equal to negative 0.758 and because that's the relationship that shows up in the scatter plot. Okay. Now, according to the information that you are given R in the scatter plot, does there appear to be a linear relationship between coffee and sleep? Well, yeah, it does appear to be linear. Okay. It's basically the same question. Just asking it a slightly different way. Certainly we can see that linear relationship. It doesn't seem to be curving in any way, all right? And in addition, again, we said that it's a moderately strong negative relationship, all right? And so consequently, yes, there does appear to be a linear relationship. Then thirdly, suppose that you're given the following regression equation. Regre remember, a regression equation is used for prediction. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and predict how much somebody would sleep based upon the number of, uh, the number of ounces that they drink of coffee, okay? So we've got y hat, right? My response variable, that's sleep, okay? And x, right, number of ounces of coffee. And 
And we got those two relationships, <laughs> right? And so we want to know how many hours of sleep would you predict you would get if you drank 16 ounces of coffee per day, all right? So what we're going to do is y hat, we're going to predict the amount of sleep based upon 8.0757 or 058 plus 0 0.04327 times 16. So I'm just going to use that particular one. I'm, I'm doing a little bit of rounding. You can, in, in fact, use all of the numbers if you'd like. In fact, why don't we do that? Yeah, right? Go to four decimal places at least, okay? So 8.057, oh, excuse me, 0, 7, 5, 8, plus 0. 0.04327 times 16 equals 8.76812. Oh, 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 excuse me, that's a minus. I made a boo-boo, it's not plus, this is a minus, so we've got to go back. We do our calculations, so it's actually 8.0758 minus 0 0.04327 times 16. And that's 7.383, so 7.383 hours. So this is approximately 7.383. <laughs> so I use my regression equation in order to make that prediction, right? And the prediction says that if I drink 16 ounces of coffee, I will sleep 7.383 hours. There we are. So, again, regression is going to compare two quantitative variables from individuals inside of the same population, all right? What we're trying to do is see is, is there a linear relationship between those two variables? In this case, coffee and the amount that somebody sleeps, the strength of that relationship and the direction is going to be based upon R. So if R is negative, it's a negative relationship. If R is positive, then it will be a positive relationship. And then its strength is going to be based upon this number, the 0.758. Okay? And if you'll reference back to our, my earlier video, right, between 0 and 0.5, it's weak. Between 0.5 and 0.8, we're going to get moderately strong. And anything greater than 0.8 is going to be strong. Right? And if it's moderately strong or above, that's fairly good evidence that we have a, uh, a linear relationship. Okay? All right, cool. And that completes this example.